The boots of all those invading troops, along with their shirts soaked with innocent blood, will be piled in a heap and burned, a fire that will burn for days. For a child has been born, for us, the gift of a son, for us. He'll take over the running of the world. His names will be Amazing Counselor, Strong God, Eternal Father, Prince of Wholeness. His ruling authority will grow, and there will be no limits to the wholeness he brings. He'll rule from the historic David throne over that promised kingdom. He'll put that kingdom on a firm footing and keep it going, with fair dealing and right living, beginning now and lasting always. The zeal of God of the angel armies will do all this. It has been a year, and now it's Good Friday again. We meditate on the death of our Savior, Jesus. We see him stripped, beaten, bare, arms stretched wide in full surrender to the weight of death, crushing his lungs into darkness, thick, impenetrable, sealed in the damp chill of the tomb. How can this be? Hope fades, replaced with questions, doubts, confusion, despair, there are no answers in the waiting. This is the day when we remember Jesus choosing to die, to make sure God's love for us would never be questioned again. This is a day to honor the season before new life, when everything has been laid bare. We honor the season of grief, loss, confusion, and uncertainty. We honor the hopes that have had to be buried. John 12, 24 through 26. Listen carefully. Unless a grain of wheat is buried in the ground, dead to the world, it is never any more than a grain of wheat. But if it is buried, it sprouts and reproduces itself many times over. In the same way, anyone who holds on to life just as it is, destroys that life. But if you let it go, reckless in your love, You'll have it forever, real and eternal.
Mark 8, 27 through 37. Jesus and his disciples headed out for the villages around Caesarea Philippi. As they walked, he asked, who do the people say I am? Some say John the baptizer. Others say Elijah. Still others say one of the prophets. He then asked, and you, what are you saying about me? Who am I? Peter gave the answer. You are the Christ, the Messiah. Jesus warned them to keep it quiet, not to breathe a word of it to anyone. He then began explaining things to them. It is necessary that the Son of Man proceed to an ordeal of suffering, be tried and found guilty by the elders, high priests, and religion scholars, be killed, and after three days, rise up alive. He said this simply and clearly so they couldn't miss it. But Peter grabbed him in protest. Turning and seeing his disciples wavering, wondering what to believe, Jesus confronted Peter. Peter, get out of my way. Satan, get lost. You have no idea how God works. Calling the crowd to join his disciples, he said, anyone who intends to follow or to come with me has to let me lead. You're not in the driver's seat, I am. Don't run from suffering, embrace it. Follow me and I'll show you how. Self-help is no help at all. Self-sacrifice is the way, my way to saving yourself, your true self. What good would it do to get everything you want and lose you, the real you? What could you ever trade your soul for? It happened just as he said it would. God is true to his promises. You set us up above all the stars. You set us on a high place by where you are. And while we were dead, you made us your friends. And you scattered our dead upon the way. Glory to one, God's murdered son, who paid for my resurrection. Glory to one, God's murdered son, who paid for my resurrection. from the dust and once from the grave daughters and sons from the ashes you've raised and you hid in our faults even from your own face and you scattered our dead upon the way to one God's murdered son who paid for my resurrection glory to one God's murdered son who paid for my
once from the dust and once from the grave daughters and sons from the ashes you've raised and you hid in our faults even from your own face and you scattered our dead upon the waves and you scattered are dead upon the waves. Luke 22, 40 through 48. Leaving there, Jesus went, as he so often did, to Mount Olives. The disciples followed him. When they arrived at the place, he said, pray that you don't give in to temptation. He pulled away from them about a stone's throw, knelt down and prayed, Father, Remove this cup from me, but not what I want. What do you want? At once, an angel from heaven was at his side, strengthening him. He prayed all the harder. Sweat wrung from him like drops of blood, poured off his face. He got up from prayer, went back to the disciples, and found them asleep, drugged by grief. He said, what business do you have sleeping? Get up. Pray so you won't give in to temptation. No sooner were the words out of his mouth than a crowd showed up. Judas, the one from the Twelve, in the lead. He came right up to Jesus to kiss him. Jesus said, Judas, you would betray the Son of Man with a kiss? Then they all took Jesus to Pilate and began to bring up charges against him. They said, we found this man undermining our law and order, forbidding taxes to be paid to Caesar, setting himself up as a Messiah King. Pilate asked him, is this true that you're King of the Jews? Those are your words, not mine, Jesus replied. Pilate told the high priest and the accompanying crowd, I find nothing wrong here. He seems harmless enough to me but they were vehement. He's stirring up unrest among the people with his teaching, disturbing the peace everywhere, starting in Galilee and now all through Judea. He's a dangerous man, endangering the peace. Then Pilate called in the high priests, rulers, and the others and said, you brought this man to me as a disturber of the peace. I examined him in front of all of you and found there was nothing to your charges. And neither did Herod, for he has sent him back here with a clean bill of health. It's clear that he has done nothing wrong, let, al let alone anything deserving death. I'm going to warn him to watch his step and let him go. At that point, the crowd went wild. Kill him. We give us Barabbas. Barabbas had been thrown in prison for starting a riot in the city and for murder. Pilate still wanted to let Jesus go and so spoke out again, but they kept shouting back at him, crucify him, crucify him. He tried a third time, but for what crime? I found nothing in him deserving death. I'm going to warn him to watch his step and let him go. But they kept at it, a shouting mob demanding that he be crucified. And finally, they shouted him down. Pilate caved in and gave them what they wanted. He released the man thrown in prison for rioting and murder and gave them Jesus to do whatever they wanted. Luke chapter 23, verses 33 to 38, 44 to 49. When they got to the place called Skull Hill, they crucified him along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Dividing up his clothes, they threw dice at, for them. The people stood there staring at Jesus and the ringleaders made faces taunting. He saved others, let him save himself. The Messiah of God, ha! The Chosen, ha! The soldiers also came up and poked fun at him, making a game of it. They toasted him with some sour wine. 
so you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. Printed over him was a sign, this is the king of the Jews. By now it was noon, the whole earth became dark, the darkness lasting three hours, a total blackout. The temple curtain split right down the middle. Jesus called loudly, Father, I place my life in your hands. Then he breathed his last. When the captain saw what happened, he honored God. This man was innocent, a good man and innocent. All who came around as spectators to watch the show, when they saw what actually happened, were overcome with grief and headed home. Those who knew Jesus well, along with the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a respectful distance and kept vigil.
all the hopes of a king of the Jews buried, but God's hopes were bigger. All the believers grieving, but through their loss, God was providing. We would like to offer you a way to mark the losses you've had this past year, the hopes you've had to bury. At our Easter service on Sunday, we'll be handing out seed packets and small pots. We encourage you to plant something in this Easter season, naming the things you've had to give over to the Lord as the seeds go into the soil. If you're not able to make our Easter service for whatever reason, um, perhaps you could plant a seed yourself or a small plant. We all pray that as new life emerges, you would begin to see the even bigger kingdom hopes that God has for you in this season and every other.